Hello learners, uh, today I'm actually going to do another little section on settlement geography, but I'm going to do it slightly different. Let me just move myself away from there a little. Uh, what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to do an integration of sections. All right. Uh, for instance, I'm going to integrate classification of settlements according to size and complexity and the concepts, I apologize for that, and the concepts related to urban hierarchies. Okay. Now, you may see why am I doing something like this is because in many of the exam questions, there's integration of different sections into one question. And sometimes you may study your work according to exam guideline, but if you don't know how to integrate sections, that could create a problem in some of these questions. I know your teachers will do it according to the exam guideline because they are excellent and be proud of them. I just want to show you a few more techniques that will be involved in this. So let's get going. All right, let me get the slide moving here. All right, now let's look at the exam guideline. I just want to get my highlighter. All right, in the exam guideline, under study of settlements, you've got the classification of settlements according to size and complexity. Now, what we are going to do is we're going to take this and relate it to urban hierarchies in order to get a better understanding of the size and complexities. I find that you understand that better, okay? So let's start with this section first, okay? So when we start off, we start off with the first question, or the first concept rather, is threshold population, which is the minimum number of customers needed for a business or service to be profitable all right we do need to look at this all right no business wants to run at a loss okay but we also learn that larger stores with more selling comparison goods need a larger threshold population than smaller stores all right and therefore, these large ones will be found in bigger settlements, example, cities, and the smaller ones in smaller settlements, example, the villages or towns, all right? Because some of them may have a larger, costly, uh, they sell the common things on a bigger scale, you understand? So they need lots of customers to come in, okay? Whereas other things may not. Therefore, they may not need such a large number of customers. Like if you look at this, this is the market. Okay. And its threshold population is there. All right. It's not selling. It's a smaller store. This is a larger store. And its threshold population comes from all these people around here. Can you see all these people with their centers actually come to this one. Okay. So it's a minimum number of customers needed to make a profit all right now let's look i know i'm not following the exam guideline as is but sometimes we do i'm moving concepts around so that it makes the understanding of other concepts easier so let's go to the next one here low order good functions and services okay so these are bought every day or regularly, and they are generally cheaper. Generally, they generally found near to the customer. All right, example, your bread, milk, your post office, which offers you the service, your petrol station. You understand? These things are used more regularly. Can't be too far. You're not going to travel to Pretoria to buy a loaf of bread. You understand? Uh, if it's one rand cheaper, the distance is too far, you might as well pay the rand and go near you. Okay? Then, high order goods functions and services are more specialized, bought and used less frequently, and are more expensive, generally more expensive. 
they are found in higher order service centers and sometimes like your malls etc or you as you go higher up maybe you won't find it in your village you will find it in your town and then if it's higher order in your city all right like airport airport is not going to be found in a village sometimes not even in a town it may be in a large town or a city hospitals the same your regional shopping centers those huge ones like eastgate all right is not just going to be found in every area all right so that is your high order services Let's look at some of them here. High order goods? Definitely high order good. Let me high order good. You don't buy this all the time. High order good. All right? High order good. And this is Nike. You don't buy them all the time. It's a high order good. All right? But this bread, low order. You buy them regularly. You buy them near you. Your butter, you will buy. Your milk, your newspaper. Well, it depends if we can afford this nice chocolate. All right. It can be a little more regular that we get it. But I like these ones. The butter, the bread, and the milk, which is your low order goods. All right. Uh, low order service, okay, is a bakery. You buy your bread regularly. You understand? That's a low order service. And then we can go on. High order service is your car sales. I wish I had one of these cars here. I drive an old Scoro Scoro. But anyway, that's not important here. Yeah? This is your high order service, a car sales. All right. Then we get centers. Now, let me get my highlighter again. It's a center, All right? It may have a few shops together, whatever. If it's low order, it functions its goods and services to the surrounding area. Do you understand? If it's a high order center, it provides goods and services to settlements. Maybe your center like Eastgate Mall, you understand, will supply a large area. It may supply all the little towns in the area. People come there for shopping. I know it's quite exciting for many people to come in and shop there. Okay. Now let's look at sphere of influence. I brought this in here because it will make more sense after I discussed services and things like that area from which an urban area gets its customers. Now let's take the village. Village will supply the basic needs, etc. Maybe one or two things like your daily use, your bread and milk, the low order goods and services. As we discussed now, can you see we're using the concept here? Uh, it will be supplied to the area. So people from nearby will come. Maybe there's a garage in the area okay a multi-purpose store may sell a few clothing right maybe a small radio you see that sometimes that will be just sold in a small cheap items not very expensive radios etc something may just be sold there, but it's basically your bread your milk and your daily stuff okay then we come to the town and we notice the sphere of influences there it's a small town Right, it may have a motel, it may have a supermarket, it may have a clinic, various functions that these people also, part of them who are closer, would go in here. So the sphere of influence would be bigger. And then we come to a large town where the sphere of influence now covers the whole area, including CMB. All right, so that one may have higher order services and functions, university, airport, courts, uh, malls, you understand? So people from all these areas will go and visit there. So the sphere of influence changes depending on the size of the settlement also and the functions and services
they offer. Then range, all right, is the maximum distance a person is prepared to travel in order to obtain a good or service, all right? Goods or service. Now, higher order goods have a larger range compared to lower order goods and services. Again, bread you will buy nearby because it's a certain price. You don't find your parents say in the morning, listen, please go buy a loaf of bread and a BMW. Doesn't happen. All right. So the bread you buy nearby, but when it comes to a BMW, uh, you're going to shop around. You're prepared to travel if it's cheaper, etc. You understand? If it's 20000 cheaper, you're going to go and buy it from a larger area because it's a higher order good. You understand? You, you will travel further. Now, if you look at this, all right, convenience store selling your bread and milk. Distance is less. Let me get my pointer. All right, the distance is less. This is distance and customers, obviously. All right, now it's here, it's less. Okay, the grocery store, which sells a variety of groceries. This may be selling your bread and milk, etc., chocolates and things like that. The grocery store, which is selling a variety of groceries, various things. People will travel further. The department store, all right, selling your clothes. You will be wanting to travel greater distances, better quality. You don't buy clothes all the time. Well, maybe I'm wrong. Some of you have the money, you buy it every day. But generally, most of us don't buy clothes every day. So we will travel greater distances. So the range changes each time for each type of service from high order to low order. Now, I spoke about the hierarchy. All right, and I want to get back to my highlighter. We have a settlement hierarchy. I'll show you in a sketch just now, which refers to ranking of settlements according to size, complexity, population, range of services, size of sphere of influence. Okay, some will have less, they will be lower down on the hierarchy. Some will have more, they'll be higher up. Then we have a specific term, urban hierarchy, refers to the ranking of urban settlements only. And again, according to all those little functions, right up to size of sphere of influence. But now it's just the urban areas that we would look at. All right, and how they vary in terms of ranking from smaller to bigger. Okay, now let's look at a settlement hierarchy. Okay, uh, this includes both the rural and the urban areas. All right, we start off from an isolated farmstead, which has just a one farmstead, maybe the barn, etc. Okay, and this has the largest number. Okay, now let me just get my highlighter again. So, or my pointer rather. Okay, so if I look at this, single farmstead, largest number. Then we come to a hamlet, which is a loose grouping of farmstead. No real organization, just a loose grouping, more than one farmstead which is smaller in, in terms of numbers of hamlets. Then we come to the village, which is a more organized grouping of farmsteads. It's also a larger grouping of farmsteads. And in this, uh, we maybe it's more organized because around a road or a water source, etc. So there's a smaller number. Then from here, and if I draw a little line here, let me get my Highlighter again, and if I draw a little line from there going down to here, that makes up your urban hierarchy, all right, where it's all urban functions now. So we move towards the town, which has now just urban functions. 
You understand? Don't just sing. Remember with the village, it can have a few urban functions, simple urban functions. It's not just rural. Okay? So the town has just urban functions. It supplies the surrounding rural areas. Maybe it's people living around there. It's not that big. It has more of the uh, basic urban functions. Then we move towards the city which is a larger urban area. And this area may have more numbers of functions and variety of functions. The town may have, uh, don't have a university or an airport, but the city may have that. All right. Then we come to a metropolis. This is a large city. All right a large city with greater variety and more higher order centers, maybe an international uh, airport that is found here. Of course, we go on to a conurbation, which is now includes cities and towns put together to create a conurbation, a much larger urban area. And the last is a megalopolis, which sometimes have people up to 55 million people in one area. It sometimes links up conurbations like the southeastern seaboard of the United States. There's not many of that found in the in the world. All right. But look at what we notice here. The numbers of settlements from there to there decrease. All right. But also we notice as we move up the size of the settlement increases, meaning that a hamlet is much smaller than a megalopolis. The order of services and functions increases. Yeah, may, yeah there must be just low order services and functions. It gets higher and higher and higher and higher as we move up, and the number of it increases. The population size increases as we go from here with a few people to millions of people living here. Okay, so it changes. Obviously, it will be a difference here. Okay, here the number would increase less, more, and there, but the order of services would decrease, the order of functions would decrease population size will decrease. Okay, so that is your hierarchy, your settlement hierarchy, and from here to here, your urban hierarchy. Okay, let's go to the last one here on defining them. Okay, so a settlement hierarchy, and I need to get my highlighter, is dealing with the ranking of settlements according to their size, complexity, sphere of influence, an urban hierarchy is the ranking of urban settlements according to their significance, all the same factors. And you know the higher you go, the larger the population, the smaller the number, etc. Okay? Now, let's take one more thing that you did. Okay? And this is Kristana's model of central places. Okay, now, or central place. Uh, what Kristana looked was, and first you would note that he actually, I'll get my pointer, I don't want to mess up the diagrams. He did not use circles, he used hexagons. Reason is that if he had circles, they would have actually if you put circles together oh that looks like a circle and another circle together much better and another circle together there would be gaps in between so he do hexagons cutting out that if you brought this together there'll be overlaps you understand so he put this way where there are no gaps no overlaps and this is what he indicated now if you look at this which is a village 
it would serve a smaller area. All right, smaller sphere of influence. But as you go higher up in the hierarchy, if you look here, that's your village, smaller area, sphere of influence. All right. And as you move up to the market town, which has more higher order services, etc., compared to the village, then the market town will serve a larger sphere of influence. Can you see it? Because now it may have a motel, a clinic, etc. But if you move to a town, uh, you would find that it has more functions, more higher order functions which now draws more people. If I use this one, is a better example. It draws from the village, the market town, to the town. Obviously, these terms of market town, etc., have been used in Kristala. It was the time when he did it, and this is how the hierarchy was. Okay? And then you move to the city, which is a bigger urban settlement. It may have an airport. It may have a university. Now people from the village, the market town, and the town would come and visit here. So it's all based on a hierarchy. And this was his model of saying how the sphere of influences would change. Okay, learners, I think it's now time again to look at some questions. I just took one. And once again, once again, ah, lucky I got that. That was a little mishap. But once again, examiners do us a favor. Always, always read the statement next to it, the figure. Written. It says sphere of influence. And if you studied your work already, you are on your path to success. And if you can apply it again, obviously, immediately sphere of influence is the area from which a center business draws its customer, the area. Okay, so you can picture it already. Okay, now, when I look at this, one is a town, every bit of information is there, one is a city. Before I look at anything else, I already know that the city would have a bigger sphere of influence based on Cristalis central place, uh, place theory, all right? And also of what I learned, okay? So already I can match it. A, I know already would be the town. You can see the sphere of influence is less, okay? And B would be the city because it has a larger sphere of influence and also we know because it has a higher order services and a variety and number of services. So it will have a larger sphere to draw from areas. They introduce something here where there's an overlap. And even if you didn't pick that up, there's an overlap, isn't it? So it's not far from there, it's here. So this area is serviced by both the town and the city. So there is a zone of competition between B and A to draw these people in either way. Okay, we've now handled the diagram. We've got a good picture. Just by a few words, we were able to analyze. Let's look at the questions. First question, define the term Sophia of influence. Okay, and it's one mark. Remember, definitions full. A market area where urban settlements or businesses draw its customers or the area from which, all right, draws its customer. Remember, this is a concept. As long as the explanation is correct, it can be worded differently. Let's look at another question. Compare. Look at the words, eh? The size of the cities. Sophia of influence with that of the town. Some of us have selective reading. We don't see this, we say the size. We don't look at the word sphere of influence and we say the city is bigger. There's specific mention made to the sphere of influence. And you know, 
the city has a bigger sphere of influence than the town or the town has a smaller influence. I like the word bigger or smaller. Okay, let's go on. Determine, what determines, what determines the size of the sphere of influence, all right, of an urban settlement. You notice, this is not, watch out sometimes, learners, you can get a specific question. You may say, what determines the size of a sphere of influence evident in the sketch? This is a general. It says an urban area. You know already the order of goods sold, all right? Degree of specialization of services, like you've got specialist doctors, etc. People will travel from further, okay, but they see the general practitioner, they won't go that far. Number of functions or goods offered. Types of functions and goods offered. In, in there, you may have a, a small court in the town. You may have the supreme court in a city. So people prepared to travel far. Variety of goods and services. Obviously, greater variety, you travel further. And the price. Loaf of bread nearby. All right. The area will be small. Whereas a BMW, people will travel further. So the area is bigger. Okay. Let's look at this. Give two possible reasons for the overlap, all right, of the town's sphere of influence. All right. Now, watch this word. Possible. So you do not have to find it on the sketch if it says possible. Okay. You can give from what you learned as long as it's relevant and geographically sound. Okay. Now, it's a zone of competition where people can choose the place to shop. All right. So therefore, it's overlapping. Personal choice, convenience of where to go, right, means that sometimes people, the B may be, I like B may be, okay, may be further away from here, all right, than A, but this person likes to go and shop there. They used to shop, they like the service, they like the friendliness. Let's not get too personal. I don't know what friendliness they like, but they like the friendliness. All right. They maybe uh, enjoy this other things around there that they enjoy. So it's personal preference. Okay. I'm sorry that I'm doing that. All right. Travel to place which offers a better service, as indicated. If there is little impact on traveling time and cost, all right, uh, then they would buy from where it's more suitable. They can go either to the town or the city for another purpose, okay? That actually means that they have to do something else. Maybe they say, hey, the, the town is nearby, but I also need to go to the port, which is in the city. So I'm going to go there. All right, and do my other shopping also. En route to residence or place of work. Like sometimes maybe the person stays in A, which is the town, but he works in the city. Now, if he's coming back and he finishes late, he needs to buy bread. He most probably will buy the bread in the city and then go home to the town because the shops may be closed. Some of them may be offering cheaper goods. Therefore, they'll shop there. If they're buying in bulk especially, all right, a can of beans, maybe is a rand cheaper at, uh, at the city than the town. Although they're living nearer to a town, they decide to go to the city and buy in bulk. And they save a lot. 
the variety of goods offered, clothing, all right? Maybe the city has a variety of stores. You have better variety. You can choose better what suits you. A high order speciality of goods, all right? Customers can choose to go to the city to get that, as I indicated below, before. The higher order goods may not be offered there, so they go, okay? And the last one here is your, and let me just pull this down. All right. The last one here is for low order daily goods and services. They will most likely go to the town if they're nearer to the town. Okay. If they're nearer to the town, they will go there because it's just your bread, etc. So these are various options that you can look at. Okay. Let's look at the next one. Explain why the range that distance of different goods and services offered in city B is not the same. All right? Is not the same. So it's compared to city B. Okay? Let's look at it. The distance traveled will depend on the order of the goods and services. The further you travel, you travel for a higher order good. You travel further for a BMW than a loaf of bread. All right. Uh, higher order goods and services and customer goods will have a greater range. People will travel further for higher order goods. Distance is bigger. All right. And therefore, it will draw customers again like your BMW. Low order services, basic companies, have a shorter range. People don't want to travel far to buy a loaf of bread, which is so cheap. You buy it from nearby. The cost of goods and service, cheaper, shorter distance. All right? More expensive, further distance. I know there's some overlaps here, but that benefits you. Okay, there's overlap, some similarities, but the examiner has taken each point and explained it further. Therefore, you get full two marks for each one. Then your last one, according to the urban hierarchy. Now, there's another word, action word, urban hierarchy. Remember, the higher you go, the smaller the number, the more specialized. So the town will be lower in the hierarchy. Cities will be higher. Why are there more low-order centers like towns than high-order centers like cities? Can you see how you have to apply it? All right. And then I'm going to go through a few answers here. People are not prepared to travel long distances to obtain low-order goods. Okay, so therefore there's more. Everywhere you have these low order goods, all right? There'll be less because not all people buy high order goods all the time. So there'll be more low order centers to cater for the population around them. They're not prepared to travel further. So if there was no low order center there, there was a city selling bread, you're not going to travel 50 kilometers to a city. So there's more low order. More low order centers will exist to provide daily needs. Again, your bread, your milk, etc. Increased cost to obtain low order goods if you have to travel, isn't it? I mean, no, there's overlaps again because there's too much cost. You travel 50 kilometers, you pay, uh, I don't know, now most probably it's about 70 rand to buy a loaf of bread, which is about 16 rand. Low order centers serve a smaller area with lower order goods. Okay, it's again the same thing. High order goods and services are not required daily and frequently. So the bigger centers with the higher order goods will be less because not every day you buy. Fewer outlets provide high order goods and services because it's not bought regularly. So fewer centers, therefore fewer uh, cities than towns. People are prepared to travel long distances to obtain 
high order goods. You don't have to have it in every little town and there's so many towns, they prepare to travel, okay? High order goods serve a larger area. People are prepared again to travel to high order uh, centers. You understand, like the city. So you don't have to have many of them because they don't buy them often. Economic progression, that means as economic development takes place, some smaller centers will grow into larger centers, okay, as the number of goods, as the area around the town becomes bigger and bigger and bigger, the demand for goods would become more, and all of a sudden the town will produce more goods and higher and higher order goods, and that small town can turn into a city. All right, this is roughly some of the questions, but some of the angles of some things that can be asked. But notice again, you have to learn how to apply your information. Okay, you can't just learn, rote learn your stuff and then expect to do well in geography. Geography is not difficult. It's about applying. It's about looking at the action words, understanding them in order to do well. All the best learners till our next lesson.